This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Please don't skip the intro because I'm going to go over some important things to keep in mind when you're following this tutorial as well as all the materials that you will need. Today I'm going back to my roots or the reason that you guys probably started following me in the first place and that is turning everyday objects into something a little bit cuter. So we're going to be transforming our old jars, candles, pencil holders, or basically any cylindrical object into something cuter with decorative covers. As with most of my tutorials, this is completely customizable and made to measure. So if you have a jar or whatever cylindrical object you're using if it's larger or smaller than the one that I have you will still be able to follow this tutorial for the yarn I use my favorite yarn from yarn art that is linked on my Amazon storefront for all of the decorative covers I also have a video coming out soon that reveals or basically lists all of my favorite yarns that I use and categorizes them based on my tutorials if you want to check that out I do have some more yarn recommendations for you since this is made to measure and since you can customize the size you can use any yarn or hook size however i used a four millimeter hook for most of my things then i would also recommend that you have a hot glue gun or a fabric glue so you can easily just glue the pieces on together rather than spending so much time sewing them on i don't really like sewing so the hot glue was a lifesaver for me and i just quickly stuck all the pieces on there's joe I'd also love to introduce you to today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform with a powerful e-commerce website builder that you can use to create your dream website, launch your passion project, and sell anything. The best part is that you don't need any coding experience to turn your idea into an online reality. Get started with one of the professional website templates with designs for every category. Then customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. I personally love all the unique touches I can add to my site and tailor it to my aesthetic. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display projects in customizable galleries. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online. With a huge range of various tools and easy-to-use templates, you can start your online store or business to sell digital and physical products. You can also monetize your content by selling membership access to exclusive sections of your website. So if you'd like to create your dream website, I highly recommend that you head to squarespace.com, try it out for yourself with a free trial, and once you're ready to launch, you can use the link in the description and my code to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. To make the decorative cover, we're first going to start off with the base, which is going to be the part that goes on the bottom of your cylindrical object for whatever you're making. We're going to go ahead and get started by making a magic ring, and if this is tricky for you, don't worry, I'm going to do this a bit slowly so you can follow along. You're going to have your fingers out like this, hold on to the end, and wrap it around your fingers in sort of like an X shape. Then you're going to get your ring finger and hold on to it like that, insert your hook under, grab on to this end, pull it up, and twist as you go, like that. Then you're going to chain one while the magic ring is still on your fingers, so grab on to this over here. Try to move your fingers the way that I'm doing because I found that that's the easiest way to do it and pull it through and that is going to be your chain one. And there we go, you've got your magic ring. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert eight single crochets inside this magic ring. So hold on to it, insert your hook, making sure that you're working over both of these ends over here, and single crochet. Once you're done with your first single crochet, I highly recommend marking it with a bobby pin or stitch marker. I've lost most of my stitch markers, so I just use a bobby pin because it's a bit harder to lose. Now go ahead and make a total of eight single crochets inside your magic ring. And that is round one. For the base, no matter how large your, or small your base is, you can customize the number of rounds that you do to make it whatever size you want. Now, don't pull it in too tight because it will be hard to go into your first stitch, but we're going to be working in continuous rounds. So to start round two, we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch that we marked. So you always start your next round in the first stitch of the previous round. That's why it's so important to mark it with something. I can remove my bobby pin now and I'm going to do my first single crochet of round two. Then again, always mark the first stitch of every round. Now our pattern for round two is to put two single crochets in every stitch, including the first one where you just did your first single crochet of round two. So go ahead and insert your hook back into that same stitch, do another single crochet, 
to have two single crochets in the same stitch. Go ahead and insert two single crochets in every stitch. So that's one, insert your hook back through the same stitch and do another. Go ahead and go all the way around one and two in the same stitch. Once you come back to the place where you've marked, you're just going to pull your magic ring in tighter to close it up. Now we're going to start round three. Remember, your round always starts from the first stitch that you've marked, so insert your hook into that stitch. You can remove your marker and do your first single crochet of round three and mark it with a bobby pin. Now our pattern for round three is one single crochet and then an increase. An increase is just when we insert two single crochets in the same stitch. So what we did for round two would be increases in every stitch. So we've got our first single crochet. So in the next stitch, we have to do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. So go into the next stitch and do two single crochets. And now we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So we're gonna do one single crochet and then we're gonna do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. And just repeat this. A quick way of knowing if you're on the right track is if your round ends with an increase. Instead of you having to count all of your stitches to make sure you've got the right stitch count, if your round ends with an increase in the last stitch of that round, then you are quite possibly on the right track. And I wouldn't recommend counting because in my experience, if it ends on an increase, you've got the right stitch count. We move on to round four so once again insert our first single crochet into the marked stitch and mark that first single crochet so we know where to start our next round from now the pattern for round four is two single crochets and then an increase so we did one single crochet in the next stitch we're going to do our second single crochet and in the next stitch we're going to do an increase two single crochets in the same stitch and we're going to repeat this all the way around so in the next stitch, we've got one single crochet. In the next stitch, we've got our second single crochet. And in the next stitch, we're gonna do an increase. Now we're gonna start off with round five and follow a very similar pattern. And I hope you guys get the hang of this. So round five, once again, you do one single crochet. Mark your first single crochet. Now the pattern is just going to increase by one. So the number of single crochets that you do before making an increase will increase by one. So in round four, we did two single crochets and then an increase. And in round five, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase. So we've got our first single crochet. In the next stitch, I'm gonna do my second. In the next stitch, I'm gonna do my third. And in the next stitch, I'm gonna do an increase and repeat this all the way around. The pattern is very repetitive and super easy to get the hang of. So you can easily customize it by doing as many rounds as you want to make the base as large as your cylindrical object. Or if you have a smaller jar, you can just stop any time that the rounds are large enough. Now a total of five rounds are large enough for the jar that I am making this for. So I'm gonna stop here, but if you want to make it larger, so you can do round six, seven, up to whatever number you want, all you have to do is increase the number of single crochets you do before an increase by one. But once you're done making as many rounds as you need to, it's time to do the round that will turn our flat base into a cover that works upwards. So instead of our rounds going outwards, we want them to now go upwards. So in the next row, we won't be doing any increases. It's just gonna be one single crochet in every stitch. The row that comes after your increase rounds is going to be a little bit different than the rest. You're not gonna be working into the stitch like this. Instead, you're only going to be working into the back loop. So you've got your front loop, that's your front loop, and then you've got your back loop. You're only gonna work through the back loop. So do your first single crochet of the next round. Mark it with a bobby pin. You still have to always mark the first stitch that you do for every round. Now go ahead and just insert one single crochet into the back loops of every stitch. No increases, just one single crochet into the back loops. Once you're done with this round, you're just going to move it like this. And now we're gonna start doing what I like to call repeat rounds. So repeat rounds are basically just one single crochet in every stitch, no increases, and you keep on repeating them until your cover is as large as you want it to be. So for this, all you have to do is insert your hook into the stitch like normal, and do one single crochet in every stitch. 
So that's my first single crochet of my next round. I'm gonna mark it. And now I'm just gonna go regularly into every stitch, just doing one single crochet. And I'm gonna do this all the way around until I reach the stitch marker. Then I'm gonna start my next round, one single crochet in every stitch. And I'm gonna keep doing rounds until my cover is as large as I want it to be. You don't need to do any increases. You're just doing one single crochet in every stitch. I'm done with this. Now I'm gonna be starting my next round, same as before, first single crochet into where the bobby pin is. Mark it with a bobby pin and just one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Then I'm gonna keep doing rounds until my cover is as big as I want it to be. If you're doing these repeat rounds, you're going to notice that your work is going upwards and if it's not, then your stitches are probably too loose and I recommend making them tighter. So keep doing as many repeat rounds as you want and just try it on. You're going to see that it should fit quite comfortably around your jar. And yeah, just keep doing rounds until it's as big as your cylindrical object. Another step is that if your jar gets smaller at the top and you want to decrease the size of your the top, here's how we're going to do it. So depending on how many increase rounds you did, so for example, I ended my increase rounds with three single crochet and then an increase. So with the steps that you used for the increase round, your very last increase round, you're just going to replace that with a decrease. So my last increase round followed a pattern of three single crochets and then an increase. So to decrease or make the size of my jar smaller, I'm going to take that same pattern. So I'm going to do three single crochets, but instead of doing an increase, I'm going to do a decrease. So I've got one, two, three, and here's how to do a decrease. I'm just going to grab on to one of the loops in one stitch grab onto the loop of the other stitch, only the front one, like that, slide your yarn through both of those two loops, and then yarn over and slide through the other two loops, and that is an invisible decrease. Then go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around. So one, two, remember this depends on how many rounds you did and what pattern you ended your increase rounds with. So for example, if your last increase round was um, five single crochets and then an increase. So for the decrease round, you would be doing five single crochets and then a decrease. So I'm going to show you how to do an invisible decrease one more time. You grab onto the front loop and the other stitches front loop, slide the yarn through both of those loops, and then yarn over and slide through the other two loops, and repeat this all the way around. After you're done with your decrease round, you can do repeat rounds by just doing one single crochet in every stitch to build some length. Or if you want your jar to get even smaller, you can do another decrease round following the same pattern. Once your cover comfortably fits around your cylindrical object, I'm going to show you how to end your work. But you're just going to go into the stitch that you've marked and slip stitch into the next few stitches to end the round. So I'm just going to go there and slip stitch and maybe in the next two as well just to make it a little bit more secure. And then we're going to fasten off. There's many different ways to fasten off, but the way that I like to do it is just by chaining two. Then I'm going to get my scissor, cut the yarn off, pull, and tighten it. I've made these in a bunch of different colors. I'm still working on the brown one, but basically once you're done, your cylindrical object should be able to easily slide in and out. And if you want to make this a little bit more secure, you can get your hot glue gun and just glue the top together so that it doesn't come off. To make the top of the cake jar, you're going to repeat the same steps for the base and then repeat the same steps for the next round and then do some repeat rounds until the top is as big as the lid that you're making this for. So once your piece fits comfortably around the lid of the jar that you're making this for, we're going to do the shell border. The way that this works is you're going to remove your bobby pin. We don't need it anymore. You're going to skip that stitch where your bobby pin was and you're going to insert five double crochets into the next stitch. So yarn over, go into that next stitch. Remember you should be skipping one and do five double crochets in that same stitch. So right there, that's my third, fourth, and fifth. Okay. 
And if you want, you can mark that very first double crochet if you think you're going to get confused when you come back around. Now we're going to end the shell by skipping one stitch and slip stitching into the next one. And that is your shell. We're basically going to repeat this all the way around. So one more time, you're going to skip one stitch. So after your slip stitch, you're going to skip the stitch that's next to it and insert five double crochets into the next one. One, three, four, and five. Once you're done, we're going to end this shell. So we're going to skip the stitch that's next to where we inserted our double crochets and slip stitch into the next one. So skip one, then slip stitch. And that's what your shell border is going to look like. Now you're going to repeat this all the way around. I made a really tiny heart using a 2mm hook and some really thin yarn. And I'm going to use this to be a little heart-shaped window on the door that I'm going to show you how to make next. I'm going to get started by making a magic ring. So just wrap your yarn around your fingers like this, making sort of like an X shape. Hold onto it with your fingers and slide your hook through, grabbing onto the yarn, twisting it up. And grabbing onto the other end and sliding it through making a chain one like that and that should be your magic ring all right i switched to a three millimeter hook because it was near impossible for you guys to see the stitches with the two millimeter hook but basically to triple crochet you yarn over twice insert your hook pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two of the loops not all of them and if you have trouble with magic rings just pay attention to how i'm holding it to make it a little bit more manageable so you pull through two loops, then you're going to pull through the other two loops, then you're going to pull through the last two loops, and that is going to be your triple crochet, and you're going to insert three of those. So yarn over again, we're going to do our second triple crochet. Once you're done with your three triple crochets, we're going to insert three double crochets. For your double crochet, you only have to yarn over once, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the other two loops. We're going to insert our second double crochet and our third. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to repeat the same thing. So again, we're going to insert three double crochets into the magic ring. That's one, two, three. And since we're repeating the same pattern, we're also going to insert three triple crochets. So yarn over it twice. And you're going to put in three triple crochets just like before. So that's one, two, and three, my last triple crochet. Now we're going to end the heart by chaining two. I made a mistake in the beginning. I, I said chain one when you're supposed to chain two, so just make sure. I probably would have mentioned it in the text, but if you also chained one, that was a mistake. I should have mentioned it earlier. Then you're going to slip stitch back into the magic ring. So just slip stitch. And then we're going to be all done with the heart. Here's Joe. He's come here to say hello to you guys. Oh, hello, Joe. To make the door, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. And once again, the size of the door is completely customizable. You're going to go ahead and chain the width that you want for the door. Once you have the width that you want for the door, you're just going to do regular rows of single crochet. To start the row, you're going to skip the first chain, insert your hook into the second chain, and single crochet into every chain to make the first row. So go ahead, insert your hook into every chain, and insert one single crochet. I switched my yarn color to a lighter brown and followed the same steps. To make the edges of my door a little bit neater, when I start a new row, I'm not going to chain one. Instead, I'm just going to turn my work and start single crocheting into the stitches to make my rows of single crochet. So I'm just going to insert one single crochet in each stitch, and every time I want to start a new row, I'm just going to turn my work and then insert one single crochet into all of the stitches to make the next row. So once again, I have to start my next row. I'm not going to chain one, just turn my work and then single crochet into all of the stitches. This is just so that our edges will be a little bit neater for the door. You can do as many rows as you want. Now in your last 
row i'm going to show you how to get that curved edge i also figured out that if you want that sort of like door look then you could also just do a door like this and it's gonna have these little lines that give the texture of wooden doors so that would also be really cool however i want something with a curved edge at the top so to do this we're going to pull in the edges closer so you're going to turn your work to start your new row and we're going to single crochet these two stitches together to do that insert your hook pull up a loop but don't complete the single crochet instead go into the next stitch as well pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on your hook like that now single crochet into all of the stitches until you have two stitches left make sure to do this really really tightly don't make this loose and then when you do have two stitches left you're going to single crochet those two together as well insert your hook pull up a loop insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop then yarn over and pull through all three loops like that now to end our work you're going to turn it once again slip stitch into all of the stitches just pulling them in even tighter in case that wasn't tight enough just slip stitch into them and you're going to see that your work is starting to get that curved edge at the top it is also going to curve inwards but i'm going to be hot gluing this piece onto the door so i'm not that worried however if you are going to be sewing it on then it might be a bit tricky to get this bump out of the way so i would recommend just like gluing it flat like that and once you're done you can fasten off so i'm just going to chain two and cut my yarn pull and tighten to end the door now i'm going to go ahead and glue the heart onto the door and then add a little pearl for the doorknob after i finished gluing on the door and adding my little decorations i'm also sewing on the windows with a plastic needle just using the running stitch However, you can make these windows out of crochet as well, and to do that, you're just going to follow the same steps for the door, but chain a smaller piece for the size you want for the window. And that's it, just do rows of single crochet, and you can stick it on as well. However, I wanted something that's a bit more light. That's why I'm just sewing on the outlines of a window with my plastic needle, with the running stitch going back and forth. When I'm done, I'm going to glue my decorative cover onto my jar, and then I'll be all done. This is what your finished fairy house should look like. Once you've got the size that you want for the bear holding a heart pencil holder, we're going to start directly by making the ears, so don't fasten your work off. Decide how wide you want the bear's ears to be. So I want it to be as wide as four stitches, so one, two, three, four. Just insert my hook into the next four stitches and do one single crochet each. If you want your ear to be wider, you can do five, you can do six stitches. It's completely up to you and depends on how large the jar or cylindrical object that you're using is. That's my second single crochet, third and fourth. Now I'm gonna be doing rows of single crochet to build the length for that ear. So to make the next row, I'm going to just chain one and turn my work this way. Now I'm going to insert my hook through each of those four stitches and insert another single crochet in each of them to make the ear go upwards and to make it a little bit longer than the rest of the decorative jar. That's my third stitch and I'm going to go into my fourth. And that is the width that I want for the bear's ears. So you can see that it is as wide as four stitches. I'm going to do one more row, but if you want to make your bear's ears longer, then you can keep doing rows of single crochet, chain one, turn your work, do another row. It's completely up to you. However, once you're ready to end your ear, we're going to make sort of like a curved edge at the top. So to do that, you're going to chain one, and now we're going to single crochet two together. You're going to insert your hook in the first stitch, pull up a loop, but don't complete the single crochet. Instead, you're going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on your hook. That is how you single crochet two together. We're gonna repeat the same thing in the next two stitches. So insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, but don't finish it. Instead, you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. If you have more stitches because your ear is wider, single crochet two together, for all of the stitches. After you're done, there's another little extra step that I like to take, but 
but basically you're just going to turn your work, skip that first single crochet, and slip stitch into the second single crochet. This is just going to make the ear a little bit rounder looking, so it's just going to fix up that shape a little bit, and slip stitch all the way back down as well. So if you want, you can slip stitch into the side of the ear, you can slip stitch across the jar so you can insert your hook into all of the stitches and just slip stitch all the way across that's what your ear will look like now what you can do instead of fastening off you can slip stitch all the way around so insert a slip stitch into each of your stitches until you reach the place where you want your next ear to start from and in the next four stitches I want my ear to be so instead of slip stitching in those four stitches, I'm going to single crochet and start my rows for the bear's ears. So that's one, and this is two, three, and four. Now I've started the row for my bear's ears, and I want my ear to be right over there. We're going to repeat the same step that we did on the other side. So you're going to start your second row by chaining one, turn your work, single crochet into each of those stitches that you made for the ear two three and four it's important to make sure that you have the same number of stitches in every row and now i'm going to do my row of single crochet two together so i'm just going to chain one turn my work again insert my hook here pull up a loop but i'm going to single crochet two together so i'm not going to complete this i'm going to go into the next stitch pull up a loop and pull through all three. I'm going to repeat the same thing for these two stitches. So single crochet these two together. And that is what you should end up with. After you're done with your second ear, you can just slip stitch downwards until you reach the stitches again. So I'm just going to slip stitch in on the side of my ear and then slip stitch in the remaining stitches that are left. When you're done you can simply fasten off by chaining two cutting your yarn pulling it tight and then you can weave your end in or just hide it inside your jar to see how to make the hands hearts mouth nose and ears i have a full tutorial for a bear holding a heart book cover and i use the same exact pattern for everything so i followed the same steps in my own tutorial and i made the same pieces and i just glue gunned them on so i would recommend just gluing them on i don't know why i haven't been doing that more often but instead of sewing it you can just glue your glue your pieces on and that's it. you'll be all done so i'll have that tutorial linked in the description or you can just go to my channel it's the bear holding a heart book cover follow the same exact steps make all the pieces and you're done for the flower pots after you're making the piece for your jar and it's as big as your jar and you have only a bit of space left at the top we can add some ruffles now this is optional and if you don't want to add ruffles you can skip this step but if you do want to add ruffles like mine we're going to do this with double crochet increases and you're still going to mark you're going to go ahead and insert two double crochets in every stitch and this is what's going to make the ruffles so in that same stitch i'm going to insert another double crochet so in every stitch you're going to be putting two double crochets each and then you can mark that first double crochet that you made so that when you come back around you know where you started from so one more time in every stitch you have to do two double crochets if you think that it's not roughly enough then you can put three double crochets in every stitch or if you want your ruffles to be a little bit shorter you can do single crochet increases or half double crochet increases so this is completely up to you so i switched to doing three double crochets in every stitch because it wasn't roughly enough for my taste so you just put three double crochets in that same stitch and you do this all the way around if you want less ruffles you can just continue along doing two double crochets in every stitch once you're done doing the ruffles all the way around, I'm going to show you how to fasten off your work. Basically, you're going to go into the stitch that you've marked and you're just going to slip stitch there. You can remove your marker since we're done with this slip stitch. And then the way that I like to fasten off is just to chain two. And I'm going to get my scissor, cut the yarn, pull and tighten and you should be all done with the flower pot. 
Now you can adjust the ruffles and with a glue gun you can put it inside your jar or your vase and then glue the ruffles across the lid to make them sit however you want them to. Start off with a magic ring. You can make whatever flowers you want to decorate. And then while your magic ring is still on your fingers, you are going to chain one and then you're going to chain another. So you'll have two chains. Then you're going to insert one double crochet into the magic ring. Chain two and slip stitch back into the magic ring. This might be a bit tricky to do, so just hold on to your magic ring so that you can slide that loop through. Now we're going to repeat this pattern to make the petals. So the pattern you're going to repeat is chain two, double crochet into the magic ring, chain two again, and slip stitch back into the magic ring. So right now we've got two petals. You're going to make a total of five petals by repeating the pattern that I showed you. Once you're all done, this is what you should have. And then you can pull your magic ring in tighter to close up that circle in the middle. And this is what your flower should look like. I've got a little knot over here, but just ignore that. It was a mistake. Now we're going to fasten off. The way that I like to do it is just by chaining two really tightly. And then I get my scissor and I cut. Close up my flower and that's what your finished flower should look like. After I finished up with the pot, I put a ribbon around it. This is what my ruffles look like. To make them look a little bit more roughly, I just glue gunned them. So I used hot glue to just attach it over there. I don't know if you can see that so that the ruffles would stay in the shape that I like. After making the flowers, I got this flower wire. It's like a really thick wire that's super hard to bend. You could also just use really thin sticks. And again, I used hot glue. I just glued the flowers on. Let me show you from the back. So I just glued the flowers on to there and I put them in a pot. The reason why my flowers aren't flimsy is because I've got that piece of thermopole at the bottom. So you can use something similar and place it at the bottom of your pot and then just poke your flowers through it. And then for the rest of it, for these leaves, I had a bunch of fake flowers, so I just cut leaves off of it and I stuck them inside as well. And that's your flower pot.